In this video, we are going to learn how we can implement authentication and authorization in Angular. We are going to see how we can securely transfer the user's credentials from a browser to a server and vice versa. This video is the continuation of the previous part where we have covered the JOT authentication backend side. Here we are going to consume that web API and use the generated JOT to secure both our applications. If you prefer reading about it, and also if you want to download the source code, feel free to visit the article on the Codemaze blog site. The link is in the description below. By default, you can send an HTTP request to a server on a different origin due to the browser security concerns. What we need to do is to configure the server to receive cross-origin requests. By default, the ASP.NET Core application will reject any request coming from the cross-origin clients. So, to enable cores in our web API, we need to implement a middleware in the startup class. That said, let's modify the configure service method by calling the service.addCores method with the options parameter. Here we call the addPolicy method to configure a new course policy. We have to provide a policy name and to provide an action delegate implementation by calling allow any origin, allow any header and allow any method. To make this middleware available for the application, we are going to modify the configure method by calling the useCourse method with the policy name we already declared. To learn more about course and the additional options to configure it, you can read our article on that topic. The link will be in the description below. Perfect. At this point, the server is ready to listen to the cross-origin requests. We have created the Angular starter application that contains all the necessary code we need for this video. It consists of some basic Angular components, routes and basic form validation. Now, let's open the login component file and implement a login function with the ng form parameter. We create the credentials variable and populate the username property with the form.value.username value. Also, let's do a similar thing with the password. After that, let's use the HTTP object and call the post function where we pass the URI to the login endpoint on the web API side and the credentials for the request body. Then, let's subscribe to the response and extract the token from the response by using the token property. To store the token in the local storage, we use the local storage object and call the setItem function where we pass the key and the value. Additionally, we set the invalid login property to false and use the router object with the navigate function to navigate the user to the home page. In the case of error, we just set the invalid login property to true. As you can see, we are using the local storage to store the token. But if you prefer the session storage, you can do it in the same way, just by using the session storage object instead of the local storage. Once we have the token persisted in the storage, we can use it for future calls to access the protected resources on the server. Now, let's continue with the login form implementation in the login.component.html file. Here, we create a new form. With the form sign in class, the template reference variable login form, and on the submit action, we call the login function passing the login form. Then, we create a container for our inputs with the container fluid class. We need a heading for the form with the form sign in heading class. 
Below, we use another div tag to conditionally display an error message. With the alert and alert danger classes. And the invalid username or password message. Then we have to create our input fields. First, we create a label for the email field with the SR only class. And right below it, we create our input type email with the ID attribute, name, engine model, class form control, placeholder attribute, and additional required and out of focus attributes. In the same way, we create the password label with the same class. And the password input type with all the attributes we used for the email input except the autofocus. Finally, we create a button with some bootstrap classes. Of type submit and the submit value. Before we test this, let's just quickly implement the logout functionality. It's similar to losing the identity card. If we don't have the card, we are not able to access the protected resources. To log out the user, we are simply going to delete the token stored in the local storage. So, let's create the logout method in the home component. Inside the logout method, we are going to remove the token from the local storage by calling the remove item function and pass the key. Now, let's test this. Let's start the web API and the Angular application. Let's click the login button and populate wrong credentials. We can see the error message. Now let's use the right ones that we hard coded in a previous video. And we can see we are logged in. If we check the local storage, we can find our token there. Excellent. Now we can move on. To work with our tokens, we are going to need an additional library. So let's install the Auth0 Angular Jot library. After the installation, we have to configure it by modifying the app module.ts file. Here we import the Jot module from Auth0 Angular Jot and create a new token getter function where we just fetch our token from the local storage. Then we configure the Jot module by calling the forRoot function where we use the config object and populate the token getter property with the token getter function to retrieve the token from the local storage and to include it into any HTTP request executed by the HTTP client module. So, this means we don't have to do it manually. Additionally, we add the server's URI in the allow domain list required by Jot module. And we're going to leave the disallowed routes array empty. Okay, now we can protect our routes by using the can activate interface. This interface exposes the can activate function that we can implement to provide a route guard. This function triggers before the Angular routes activates and acts as a guard to the Angular routes. So, in the folder name guards, we can find this file and open it. First, we have to implement the can activate interface and inject a Jot helper service in the constructor. Then, in the can activate function, 
we fetch the token from the local storage. If a token exists and it is not expired, we return true. Otherwise, we use the router to navigate the user to the login screen. And of course, return false. Now, we are going to apply the OddGuard service to the customer's component route in the app module file. All we have to do is to call the CanActivate property and provide our created guard. Since we now have the JOT helper service, we can use it in the home component file as well. Let's import it from the same location as before. Inject it inside the constructor and modify the if statement to check if the token has expired. Good, now let's test this guard. We can start the Angular application and without logging in, try to navigate to the customer's page. As we can see, we are navigated to the login screen. This means our guard works as it's supposed to. Of course, if we log in and try to navigate to the customer page, we will be able to see the page but without a single customer. That's something we are going to work on. If you remember from the previous video, on the API side, we have the customer's controller with a single action that returns two customers. As you can see, this action is protected by the authorized attribute. So, this resource is a protected one. To access the protected resource, we need to send the JOT in the authorization header with each request. The server is going to verify the token and grant access to protected resources. Now, let's get back to the Angular app and open the customer component file. Here, we are going to implement the onInit interface and add the customer's property. Then, let's inject the HTTP client inside the constructor. We must implement the ng-onInit function where we send the GET request to the customer's endpoint on the API. In the subscribe section, we assign the customer's property with the result and if an error happens, we just log it. Now, if we start the Angular application, navigate to the login screen and enter valid credentials and navigate to the customer page, we are going to see our customers. Also, we can inspect the request and we can see our token inside the authorization header. As long as our token is valid, we're going to be able to access the protected resources. But as soon as it expires, we will have to log in again. Of course, you can always implement a logic to refresh a token and if you want to learn more about it, feel free to read our article on that topic. The link to the article will be as always in the description below. Now, let's see how to introduce roles to this story. If we inspect the get action in the customer's controller, we can see the authorized attribute. This means that our action is protected, but it also means any authenticated user has access to this action. If we want to restrict access to only managers, we can modify the authorized attribute by adding a roles property and setting it to manager. Additionally, let's modify the login action in the auth controller to set up the user claims. Here we create a new list of claims that we populate with a new claim providing the claim type and the value. Also, let's add one more claim with a role type and the manager value. Ok, we can start our applications. 
let's log in and once we click the customer link we can see all the customers this means our role authorization works finally let's check what is going to happen if the John Doe has the operator role and not the manager role to simulate this we need to modify the role claim from the manager to the operator now if you repeat our previous steps we get the 403 forbidden response awesome our authorization part works like a charm and with it we are going to finish this video don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons down there if you like the video and want to support us you can also use the bell button to get notifications from our channel also you can visit the codemaze blog to download the source code and you can subscribe to our mailing list to get notified about our new content and videos thank you for watching and we'll see you again in another video until then all the best